Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. In the last video, we learned about unit impulse and unit step sequences. In this video also, we will continue our discussion on basic sequences and we will learn about exponential sequences and sinusoidal sequences. So, let's start our lecture. The first sequence we need to learn is exponential sequence. An exponential sequence is defined as x of n equal to a raised to n where n ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, depending on whether a is greater than 1 or between 0 and 1 or between minus 1 and 0 or less than minus 1, we get 4 different kind of sequences. Next, we need to ask the question, is exponential sequence a bounded sequence? The answer is no, because the magnitude of samples tend to infinity as it either goes to the right of the axis or to the left of the x-axis. Therefore, exponential sequence is not a bounded sequence. The next sequence is sinusoidal sequence. A sinusoidal sequence can be of the form x of n equal to a cos omega 0 into n plus phi or x of n equal to a sin omega 0 into n plus phi where n ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. Here a is the amplitude of the sinusoid sequence, omega 0 is the angular frequency and phi is the phase. Also understand that this is a real sinusoidal sequence even though we are not explicitly mentioning it. Okay. So are sinusoidal sequences bounded? Obviously it is a bounded sequence because the maximum magnitude of a sample in the sequence is capital A which is always less than infinity. Now the next important question is are sinusoidal sequences periodic? The answer is no. This might surprise you but let me emphasize it again. Sinusoidal sequences are not always periodic. This is a stark difference between discrete sinusoidal signals and analog sinusoidal signals as analog sinusoidals are always periodic. Ok so I said discrete sinusoidal signals are not always periodic. This means under certain conditions it can be periodic. Right? So let us investigate those conditions. We learned in a previous lecture that a sequence is periodic if x of n is equal to x of n plus capital N where capital N is a positive integer. So our sinusoidal sequence cos n omega plus phi is periodic only if it is equal to cos n plus capital N into omega plus phi. Now using trigonometric identity this term is equal to cos omega into small n plus phi into cos omega into capital N minus sin omega into small n plus phi into sin omega into capital N. Now in order for the LHS to be equal to the RHS cos omega into capital N should be equal to 1 and sin omega into capital N should be equal to 0. This happens only when omega into capital N is an integer multiple of 2 pi. That is when omega into capital N is equal to 2 pi r where r is some positive integer. So we can say that a sinusoidal sequence is periodic only if it satisfies this condition that is omega into capital N is equal to 2 pi r or 2 pi by omega is equal to capital N by r. 
here n is a positive integer and similarly r is also a positive integer this means that the ratio capital n by r is a rational number therefore for the equation to hold true the ratio 2 pi by omega should also be rational so the sinusoidal sequence is periodic only when the ratio 2 pi by omega is rational and since pi is an irrational number the ratio can be rational only when pi is cancelled out of the ratio so a necessary but not complete condition i'm repeating again a necessary but not complete condition for a sinusoidal signal to be periodic is that omega should be some multiple of pi and the full condition is that the ratio 2 pi by omega should be rational as an example consider these two sequences in the first sequence x1 of n is equal to cos pi by 4 into n omega is equal to pi by 4 in the second sequence x2 of n is equal to cos 0.8 into n omega is equal to 0.8 which is very close to pi by 4 now this cos pi by 4 n is a periodic sequence as you can see here this sample repeats again here this sample repeats again here and so on so this is a periodic sequence with a period um 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so a periodic sequence with a fundamental period capital n is equal to 8 we can also conclude that this is a periodic sequence with our expression 2 pi by omega is equal to 2 pi by pi by 4 which is equal to 8 and 8 is a rational number therefore the ratio 2 pi by omega is rational so this sequence will be periodic and therefore we should represent x1 with a dash over it to show that it is a periodic sequence however if you see the second sequence cos 0.8 into n you can see that the samples don't repeat this is more obvious if you check the samples at the zero crossings you can see that this sample and this sample are not the same so the sequence is aperiodic we can also conclude this with our expression 2 pi by omega which is 2 pi by 0.8 and this is not a rational number so the ratio 2 pi by omega is not rational hence the sequence is not periodic okay an interesting thing here is that even though both sequences have a sinusoidal envelope one is periodic while the other is aperiodic okay now let us try to determine the period of some sequences the first one is x1 of n is equal to 4 cos 2 pi by 5 into n okay so here omega is equal to 2 pi by 5 before proceeding to find the period first we need to check if the sequence is periodic or not so let us see if 2 pi by omega is rational or not here 2 pi by omega is equal to 2 pi by 2 pi by 5 which is equal to 5 which is a rational number so the sequence is periodic now let us proceed to find the value of fundamental period for that we need to satisfy the condition omega into capital n is equal to 2 pi r or n is equal to 2 pi by omega into r which is equal to 2 pi by 2 pi by 5 into r which gives us n is equal to 5 into r now we need to find the smallest natural number r for which n is a positive integer if we take r equal to 1 then we get n equal to 5 so this is the fundamental period of the sequence now you might ask why not r equal to 2 and n equal to 10 this will also satisfy this condition right yes but we are only interested in the fundamental period 
and for that we need to find the smallest value of r and n that satisfy this condition this is the reason why we are not considering other values of r and n okay now let us move to the second example x2 of n is equal to sin of 0.6 into pi into n plus 0.6 pi here omega is equal to 0.6 pi just like before first we need to check if the sequence is periodic or not so 2 pi by omega is equal to 2 pi by 0.6 into pi and pi and pi cancel out which leaves us with 20 by 6 or 10 by 3 and as you can see this is a rational number so the ratio 2 pi by omega is rational that is this is rational and therefore the sequence is periodic now let us figure out the fundamental period for that n is equal to 2 pi by omega into r which is 2 pi by 0.6 pi into r which will be 10 by 3 into r now we need to find the smallest positive integer r for which capital n is a positive integer here the smallest such value of r is r equal to 3 therefore fundamental period n is equal to 10 by 3 into 3 which is 10 so the fundamental period of this sequence is 10 now consider three sequences x1 of n x2 of n and x3 of n with periods n1 n2 and n3 respectively if we take a new sequence x4 of n which is a linear combination of x1 of n x2 of n and x3 of n then the period of x4 of n will be lcm of n1 n2 and n3 to show that this is the case let us consider an example the expression in the question is a linear combination of these three sequences if we proceed just like we learned we will see that the period of this sequence will be n1 equal to 5 the period of this sequence will be n2 equal to 20 and the period of this sequence will be n3 equal to 4 so the period of this entire expression will be lcm of n1 comma n2 comma n3 which is lcm of 5 comma 20 comma 4 which is 20 therefore n4 is equal to 20 you can also verify this by counting the samples in this graph okay now there is also an interesting thing that happens in the case of discrete sinusoidal signals to understand that let us see these four graphs the red sequence here has omega equal to pi by 4 you can see that it takes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 samples to complete one cycle of cosine waveform now this green signal here has an omega equal to pi by 2 and it takes 1 2 3 4 four samples to complete one cycle this means that this function is oscillating faster than this omega equal to pi by 4 now coming to omega equal to pi it only takes 1 2 so two samples to complete one cycle so as you can see the signals are oscillating faster when omega is increased from omega equal to pi by 4 to omega equal to pi which is normal right but now comes the interesting part here omega is equal to 3 pi by 2 which is greater than pi from your experience in time domain cosine functions you would expect the signal to oscillate even faster right but here if you count it takes just 1 2 3 4 samples to complete one oscillation so the frequency of oscillations actually reduced when you increased omega to a value greater than pi 
Also, if you see the sequence for omega equal to pi by 2 and omega equal to 3 pi by 2, you can see that they are exactly the same. This is another interesting property which we will learn later. For now, note that in the case of discrete time sinusoidal signals, the maximum frequency of oscillations occur when omega is equal to pi. Also, the frequency of oscillations increases from 0 to pi and decreases from pi to 2 pi. For this reason, the frequencies in the neighborhood of omega equal to 0 and omega equal to 2 pi are called low frequencies and the frequencies in the range of omega equal to pi are called high frequencies. Uh, this might come as a one or two mark question for your university exams. So just remember this, okay? Now to summarize this lecture, we defined exponential sequences and sinusoidal sequences and also learned that sinusoidal sequences are not always periodic. Then finally we learned about low frequencies and high frequencies. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this lecture are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you. If you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next few videos, we will see solved examples based on what we have studied so far. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.